I'm Jim Winterton, coach of undefeated USA racquetball team for 10 years, 2000 inductee in the Racquetball Hall of Fame, and USA Racquetball Coach of the Year, 1995, 2003, and 1999. And racquetball is a great sport. It's a sport that you can play your way to fitness. And if you think about it, when you come into a health club, they'll ask you if you're there to work out or to play racquetball. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather play my way to the calorie burning, not work my way to the calorie burning. So let's get started. No game will work without the proper equipment. What ball to play with? You got blue racket balls, you got green racket balls, you got red racket balls, and purple racket balls. Actually, it doesn't really matter. All of these have uh, a little bit of a different feel to them, and uh, some of them, like the purple ones, are played with the pros. Uh, Pens make those. Uh, Ectolon makes a ball, so does Wilson. All of these companies make a good ball, and most players play with all of them. Um, racket. Probably your most important piece of gear you can get. I recommend starting with a racket uh, in the $30 to $40 range to get a feel of the game. The analogy I like to use is for skiing. When you ski, you use rental pair. I wouldn't know the difference. I'm a horrible skier, but a top skier would. And as you get better and better in racquetball, you're going to want to move your model up. Grip size, you can't really get a grip size um, too big. Most of the grip sizes are small today. They're not real big grip sizes like tennis so that you can use your wrist to hit the ball. Eye guards, the most important piece of equipment. If you went out and played with like these eyeglasses right here and I got hit on the side and it broke the frame, I could lose an eye. If I played without eye guards, I could get hit in the eye and I could lose an eye. And it's really like sawing wood. You could probably saw wood all year and never get hurt without safety glasses, but it only takes one time to lose an eye. So better safe than sorry. Eye guards. And glove. Now you'll see a lot of players with gloves. Um, the gloves just keep the racket a little firmer in your hand and you have to develop a feel for it. Some players don't use gloves at all, but most players like a glove. And ladies, I'm told that the glove really helps protect your nails and uh, helps your hand look better, I guess, by wearing gloves. And last is footwear. Now, this is a multi-sport shoe. You can also play, use a tennis shoe or basketball shoe, and they also have racquetball shoes that the major racquetball companies play. So this pretty much covers the equipment that you're going to need for clothing, a sweat jacket you'll need because in the winter months, if you live in a northern climate, you want to stay warm. Uh, shoes, shorts, make yourself more comfortable when you play. Some of the ladies, a lot of the ladies wear skirts when they play, uh, sports skirts. And so those are basically the, the basic components of the equipment and gear that you're going to need to get out there and get a good workout. Okay, now that we've talked about equipment, we're going to talk a little bit about safety. And to be safe on the court, Sammy here is helping me out. And Sammy has his eye guards on. He has his racket attached to his wrist by a string. And so he's already way ahead of the game with safety. One of the things about safety is this. When I first start playing and I'm tracking the ball, I'm really focusing on this ball. I don't even see Sammy. So I might pull my racket back and hit Sammy right in the face without attending to because I'm so focused on the ball. So when you begin, you have to not just watch out for the ball, you have to watch your opponent. And if your opponent gets next to you, you yell what? Hinder. Louder. Hinder. Hinder! And you stop play immediately so you don't hurt anyone and you just play over. That's called a hinder. And one other thing about safety, and that is this. On a glass court, you're going to see we have a, a door back here. In this door, if you open the door, no problem. You can see who's on the court. But on an enclosed court, that's a huge problem because on an enclosed court, you can't see who's on the court. Many of the clubs all over the world have enclosed courts, and if you just open that door without knocking on it, someone could run into the door. 
So you always should knock on the door before you open it so that you don't hit somebody. That way the game will be safer. The game is pretty safe as it is. One other thing about safety we'll talk about later, and that's positioning, so that you're not in the way of your opponent. Next, we have to think about this. What are all these lines? You see these lines all over the place? Let's go through these one by one. Sammy, point that out up there. That's the service line. This line begins the service zone. When you start serve, your foot can be over it, but not all the way over it. So this is a service zone. This back line is called the short line. When Sammy initiates play, all right, just drop the ball. He drops the ball on the floor and he serves it. Just go ahead and hit a serve. All right, now that is a good serve because it got past the second line and that's what these lines are for. Come back to the rules in a minute. This line right here is the drive serve line. And if you were left-handed and you were going to hit a drive serve on this side of the court, your racket cannot cross this plane serving to this side. That's what this line is for. It's called the drive serve line. And as a right-hander, you'll notice there's one right here on this side. So as a right-hander, if I'm going to hit a serve, I can't break the plane here and serve to this side. This next one over here, this is a doubles box. Sammy, be my doubles partner. And in a second, you're going to see our doubles lesson. Sammy's my doubles partner. He stays in that box. When I serve the ball, Sammy can come out once the ball passes this line. And that's what this is for. So I serve, and now he comes out, and we play doubles. That's what that line's for. The last line, this one right here, is called the receiving line. And the purpose of this line is to protect the server. So come on back here, Sammy. If I'm serving to Sammy, Sammy cannot hit the ball out of the air in front of that line. So if I hit this serve right here, he can't cross over. He cannot cross over and hit it. He can, however, short hop the ball if it lands close to the second line. He can short hop it, but he cannot when he does short hop it, he cannot, his follow through cannot come over this line. He can hit it behind this line and it can follow through over the line, but he cannot short hop it in front of this line. And the purpose of this rule is to protect the server because if I'm here and he comes in and hits it, I could get hit right in the face. And that's the purpose of the receiving line. And those are the lines on the court and what they're all about. All right, we have Courtney playing her brother, John Craig. Now, Courtney has to get the ball past the second line or it's a fault. So she's going to hit a fault serve, one short, short serve. There you go. Now, that's a short serve because it didn't get past the second line. Now, a long serve is another type of fault, and it hits the back wall in the air. There you go. That's a long serve. All right, both of those are fault serves. If she had hit those in a row, a short and a long, she would have lost her serve. Now hit three walls in the air. That's another type of false serve. Now watch, Courtney's going to hit front wall, side wall, side wall in the air. That is a three wall serve. That's a type of false serve. Now hit front wall ceiling, and that's another type of false serve. There you go. That's a false serve. So any combination of two, and she loses her serve. There's another type of fault also, and that would be a foot fault. That is a foot fault because she started behind the line. Now, in a tournament, she would lose her serve automatically for that because that's a back line foot fault. If she hits a serve and goes way over the front line, right there, front foot has gone over the front, so that would also be a fault. Now, when you're first starting playing in, in the club, we very rarely call foot faults on each other. And the analogy I use is bowling and the foul line in bowling. You really don't call the foul line except for tournament play or if you're in some kind of big money match maybe. But for the most part here in racquetball, we don't call those foot faults, but they will get called in a tournament. 
Once the ball comes back here, it's in play. So Courtney's hits the front wall, it comes back, and now it's in play. Now, right here, Courtney moves into center court position. When she does that, she makes this court smaller. Go ahead and do that again. All right, this is center court position right in here. Now, she's here, the ball's there. She only has a step to this wall, go ahead. And she has a few steps to this wall, and she has the whole court covered. Any ball that goes over her head comes back to her. Now stay up front. If she stays up front, go ahead and hit your serve. And stay there, stay, stay there. If she stays here, the whole court is open. John Craig can hit the ball anywhere, and she cannot get to it. If he hits it down the line, she has no chance to get to that ball. If he hits the ball right at her, go ahead and hit the ball right at her. She still has no chance because she's jammed. She's too close to the front wall. Now when she gets back here though, now do any one of those shots, John Craig, and she has a chance to get to it, all right? If he leaves the ball up a little bit, boom. now she has a chance to get to that shot because the ball's left up. So center court positioning is important. But when you first begin, it's hard to do the center court positioning because usually something like this happens. You'll hit your serve and you'll go, wow, I hit a good serve, that's amazing. And then it's too late. By the time he hits the ball, you realize, oh, I gotta move. So then this happens. So then you go, okay, I know what I did, I gotta move. So you hit a short serve and you move out. That doesn't do you any good either. So what you have to do is really, really focus. First, you got to get the ball back, and then you got to move back. You'll see as you get going, it's much easier than it looks. Now, Courtney's going to put the ball in play, and once the ball's in play, the ball's past the line. Go ahead. She's in good position. Go ahead, and they're going to have a rally. John Craig hits it back, she hits it back, and now stop right there. She hit the floor. John Craig hit her shot, she put it into the floor. Because she put it into the floor, she did not get the ball back to the front wall before it bounced twice. That's all you have to do. Think of this as a giant tennis court with a wall around it. In tennis, if the ball bounces twice, you lose the rally. In racquetball, you actually have another chance. The ball hits once on the floor, you can hit it off the back wall. Observe, Courtney's going to hit a shot, all right? It comes off the back wall, and John Craig can now hit it off the back wall, all right? John Craig also can hit the ball into the back wall. Hit him a shot, a little easier one, easier, and like that, and get it back to the front wall. You can hit any combination, hit him another one, and just hit it around the wall ball. John Craig can hit any combination of walls and ceilings as long as he gets the ball back to the front wall before it bounces on the floor twice. Once he's done that, the ball continues to be in play. The first time that someone does not get it back to the front wall, like Courtney did earlier, she hit what we call a skip shot. It didn't make the front wall. Or if the ball bounces on the floor two times, the rally is lost. If John Craig wins the rally, he doesn't win a point. He wins the right to serve. He then goes in to serve. Courtney comes back. And Courtney's now receiving serve. And the game is played to 15. The first one to 15 wins. And you score like volleyball. Server scores. Receiver wins the right to serve. You don't have to win by two. You don't have to serve one side and then the other, like in tennis or squash. In this sport, it's just put the ball in play, and the first one to get the ball back before it bounces twice, and the other one doesn't, they win the rally. And that's basically how you play the game. Now, strategically, strategy, beginning strategy, if you hit the ball low and hard, that's to your advantage. So just hit a beginning drive serve, not an advanced one, one step beginning drive serve. So he hits, a, he hits a drive serve and he's hitting it low and hard and then she's trying to return. Now, if he doesn't get that serve in, 
If it's a short serve, then his second serve is going to be a little safer. So he's going to hit like a lob serve. And this would be a lob serve second serve. Go ahead. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, good. Now there's some other strategic serves also. One would be a Z serve. Could you hit a Z serve to this side, please? Z serve hits front wall, side wall, and comes back. All right? That's a Z serve. All right? Now, another serve, you got Z serve and you got lob serve and you have drive serve. You could also combine the two and make a lob Z serve. So hit a forehand lob Z. So he's going to hit a forehand, this is called a forehand lob Z serve. It's a cross between, it's a hybrid, a cross between a lob and a Z. All right? All of these are strategy type serves. I will tell you this, the Z serves are not a good idea to do when you're beginning racquetball. And the reason for that is a zealous opponent will hit the ball out of the air and then hit you in the back. It's a painful experience when you're hitting all of these different serves. Now, let me show you some of the shots that we have in racquetball. John Craig, would you come over here, please, and uh, execute a kill shot. This is called, so just hit the ball to yourself and then kill it. Tap the ball to yourself. The ball comes back and he kills it. That's called a kill shot. Or he could hit a down the line pass. This one's going to come right at you and he leaves the ball up and it comes down the line. It's a pass. We can go cross court with the pass. John Craig is going to get the shot and hit it cross court with a pass. That's another shot he can do. He can hit a ceiling ball. Now, a ceiling ball is a defensive shot, so the ball comes at him, and he flicks it up on the ceiling like such, all right? He could also hit a backhand ceiling ball from the other side. Hit the ball to yourself and hit a backhand ceiling ball, all right? And that would be a backhand ceiling ball. The ceiling ball is designed to get your opponent back. It's kind of like a punt in football. You're punting to get the other team back and buying yourself some time. The main thing about this sport is to remember that center court is like a magnet and it always drawing you back here. When you get back here, you burn tons of calories, you get a great workout, plus you're in position for the next shot. So do me a favor. At this time, John Craig and Courtney are going to put the ball in play and keep it in play, don't kill it, and keep moving to center court so we can show the folks what we're talking about in center court. Go ahead. So John Craig serves it, Courtney hits it, moves to center. John Craig moves to center. Courtney moves to center. See the two of them moving back and forth to center? See this? And they're always moving back and forth to center. All right? All right? Thanks, guys. Thanks. Now, what is center? It's right here, in the middle, behind the dotted line, behind the receiving line. If you happen to play on a club that doesn't have a receiving line, and there are some clubs like that, it would be approximately, what, about two big steps from the center of the court and the short line. This is the position where you want to get to between the shots as much as possible. Another thing about positioning in strategy is to think a shot ahead of time. Well, let me illustrate what I mean by that. If I serve the ball into the center of the court and I move back here and Courtney hits it, look what's going to happen. I'm going to get hit. Not only am I going to get hit, it would be my fault because I moved into her shot. So what I want to do is think one shot ahead. I'm going to hit the ball into the corner. Well, how do you hit the ball in the corner? Simple. Draw a line between your waist and the front wall. Wherever that line meets, I hit that spot, and it goes into the corner. Now put your racket on the ball right back there. Now you see where she is? I'm way, she's back there, I'm here, and she will not hit me because I'm in center court position and she's way back there. And that's how you think one shot ahead and try to get the ball into the corner. If I make a mistake and I hit the ball into the center, what I have to do is get out of her way so she can hit the ball because I can't stay in her way. That would be a hinder. A couple of more tips about playing this game. You get in good position, that's part of it. 
The other part is receiving serve. When the ball's being served to you, you want to get about a step from the back wall. You receive serve facing the front wall, but you don't want to hit the ball facing the front wall. If the ball comes to my left and I'm right-handed, I'm going to have to use a backhand. If you're left-handed and the ball comes to your left, obviously you're hitting a forehand. So the ball comes to my left, I want to get my feet towards the side wall. And that way, I'll be able to use my body to hit the ball. If I face the front wall, eh, eh, I'm not going to have much success hitting the ball. But if I can get my feet to the side wall, now I'm able to hit a backhand. And on the forehand side, it's the same thing. The ball comes to this side. I don't want to hit like this. I want to get my feet to the side wall and hit like this. One other thing, besides getting your feet to the side wall, I want to be careful about squeezing the racket. If I squeeze real tight with that thumb and forefinger, I'll actually twist the racket frame. This is very common in beginners. So what happens is I can swing right under the ball because I squeezed and I turned the racket. Or I can hit it and it'll go real crazy high when I'm trying to hit it low. So what I want to do, this racket has an E right here. I want to keep that logo on the strings towards the front wall. I want to keep those strings towards the front wall so that the ball gets back there. And I want to get my feet to the side wall and I want to get behind the ball so I hit it that way. Racket ball is a game of opposites. If I try too hard, I'm not going to be as successful as if I try easier. When the ball goes to the right, it's actually coming to the left. So if I go this way, the ball is coming that way. So, and if I'm running up, the tendency is to drop your racket. You want to keep your racket high when you move up and high when you move back. So the ball comes to you anywhere and your racket's high, you can hit the ball down. If you got your racket down here, you're hitting the ball up, which is not a good thing. This is cutthroat. Courtney is serving the ball, and either Sammy or John Craig will hit it. It's one against two. It's team A, one person, playing against two. Now, let's say they have a rally. Go ahead, she serves it. All right. And Sammy returns it. All right, and then she kills it. Okay, there's a point. Now, let's say she missed and she didn't kill it. She would move back to this side. Come on back. John Craig would move over here, and Sammy would move in. And now Sammy is playing against the two of them. This is called cutthroat. Basic cutthroat, we're moving clockwise, right? Now, there's another variation of cutthroat. This is advanced. So if you're a beginning racquetball player, you might get a headache with this. After the first time of moving clockwise, you move counterclockwise. You move the opposite way the second time through. In other words, Sammy served, he scores two points, she scored one point, he scores two points. Now we're going to switch. Sammy loses his serve. Instead of Sammy going to this side, Sammy goes to this side. And the reason he does that is so that the server is not playing against the same two people on the same two sides. And that's an advanced game of cut through. Another game is called doubles. In this game, go ahead, John Craig is my partner. And now we have two against two. Doubles, it's a little complicated at the beginning, but you'll get it really fast. It works like this. Because we're serving first, we get only one serve. So I'm going to serve the ball until we lose the rally. After we lose the rally, it's called a side out. As soon as the ball passes this line, John Craig can come out, and so can I. We move back as soon as the ball passes the line. We lose the rally, let's say, right? We come back. Courtney and Sammy come in, and they're playing the two of us. Now, Courtney serves, 
and let's say they score two points and Courtney loses her serve. Now Courtney goes to the box and Sammy serves. A word about beginning doubles. Sammy should serve to his side and Courtney should serve to her side. The reason we do that is so we don't get hit. If Sammy served to this side and I hit it, I would hit the racquetball princess here and I would, that wouldn't be good for her or me. I would feel bad doing that. So after they lose their serve, each of them get a serve until they lose. They come back and we go in. I serve again until I lose the serve and then John Craig comes in for the first time. Because we served first, we only had one serve the first time. The second time we get the serve back, we each get a serve. And the scoring's the same as single. Doubles is not a good game to play if you haven't been playing that long. And the reason for that is this. In all of this, Courtney knows where her racket is. Go ahead. Swing your racket like this, next to my face. I trust her to do this because she's been playing a long time and she won't hit me. She trusts me. I know where her nose is. However, a beginning player we wouldn't trust because boom, you might get hit, I might get hit. So be very careful when you're beginning. Doubles is not a great game if you're beginning. Cutthroat's a little better till you get used to it. That's what I do with my juniors. I get them used to cutthroat before we move to doubles. So there's your games. Okay, so that's the introductory lesson of racquetball. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at the website. I'd be happy to help you out. Now, this is just the beginning. It's a great way for fun and fitness to support a racquetball, and there's more to it, a lot more to it. See you at the next lesson.